Hey friends, welcome. I'm really excited for today's class. We are going to work through a series of poses designed to support you either pre or post um, ski or snowboard day. Um, I just went skiing this past weekend. I'm normally on a board, so I'm definitely feeling different parts of my body, which has inspired this, this sequence today. Um, but we'll work through a balance of some strength as well as stretches and mobility work so that there are benefits to completing the sequence either before you go out on the hill or after. We'll start together in a supine position. So come all the way onto your back. And take your feet out wide and allow your knees to fall in towards one another. We'll be here for a few rounds of breath, so take your time to get comfortable. You can bring your um, hands on the front of your hips, maybe left hand to heart, to right hand to belly. You're welcome to rest your arms out to either side of your space. Take a few moments to ground into this moment, land in your body. Allow for a slow release in the area around your hips and your low back as you hold this pyramid or mountain shape with the lower body. And see if you can soften into your breath, allowing for a full inhale and a complete exhale. And slowly begin to Separate your knees and windshield wiper your knees from side to side. Rock them right and left. <laughs> um, where were we? All right, next time your knees fall over to the right side of the <laughs> this is Bruce, he wants to join. Uh, your right heel <laughs> rest on. <laughs> we'll rest on the outer left thigh. If that causes any strain on your knee joint, you're welcome to just keep your right heel flat on the mat. Just acknowledge the sensation in your hips. You can open up your arm to a cactus or a T. And then on your next inhale, bring your knees back through center. Okay, and we'll windshield wiper, rock them side to side once again. And this time you'll land on or over to the left side of your space. Okay. Once again, you're welcome to Rest your left heel on the outer right line of your leg. Take any position with the upper body, whether it's a cactus, a T, you might rock your head from side to side. Allow some release in the upper body. Lower your left heel back down to the mat. Bring your knees back through center. One more time, windshield wiper your knees from side to side. And slowly draw both knees in towards your chest. Give yourself a big hug in, big squeeze. And with one hand on each knee, can you circle out the hip joint? So you'll draw big circles with your knees. Start in one direction. So I'm starting with the knees moving out and back in. And then when you're ready, reverse the direction, big circles the opposite way. Okay, once again, we're um, moving around the hip joint, so creating some ease in that area. 
pause back through center, send your legs and your arms up towards the ceiling. Let's circle out into the wrist, the ankle joint. They definitely, the ankles definitely take on quite a bit, or if you're like me, constantly pushing myself um, out of a fall, the wrists take on quite a bit as well. I know snowboarding, we spend a lot of time um, down on our, our bums, pressing up through the wrist, so this might feel really nice for you today. And then lower your knees back down to the mat. Figure four stretch, cross your right ankle over your left thigh. You can use your right hand to guide your right knee away from your body. This might be where you stay. If you have a bit more uh, range, you're welcome to guide your left knee in towards your body. Interlace your fingers just below your left knee maybe the back of the thigh, or again, if there's a bit more range, you can extend your left leg long. And energetically, as you draw your left knee in towards your body, can you send your right knee away? So we create that sensation in the outer right glute. See if you can attach your breath to the movement. Each exhale, you may be able to guide your knee in a little bit closer. And then let's slowly lower left foot down to the mat. Send your right leg up towards the ceiling just to release that. Then we'll switch over to the other side. Right foot meets the mat. Left ankle will cross over your right thigh. Again, this might be where you stay. Guide your left knee away from the body. If you're exploring further, draw your right knee in towards your body, interlace grip to the back of your right thigh, top of your right shin, or extend your right leg long. Notice if any tension is creeping up into your shoulders. See if you can soften your shoulders away from your ears. And again, there's that energetic drawing in of the right knee as you send your left knee away from your body. See if you can create some sensation in that outer left line. And slowly lower your right foot down, uncross your left leg, both feet flat to the mat. Draw your knees in, this time with your hands to the back of your knees. Let's rock and roll along the spine. Move back and forth a few times. Nice massage for the back body. And we'll come forward into a tabletop. So see if you can get there as smoothly as possible. Knees stack below hips, spread your fingertips wide. We'll take three cow-cat movement to loosen up the spine. As you inhale, allow your belly to fall. Peel your shoulders back, send your chest gaze through. As you exhale, root away from your palms, draw your navel to spine, tuck your chin to chest, big stretch for your back body. Two more, inhale, belly will fall, lift your hips, shoulders back, gaze through. Exhale, round, navel to spine, chin to chest, big stretch. One more, inhale, belly will fall. Exhale, you round through. You slowly meet back through center. Slide your right hand slightly forward and send your left leg long behind you. Open to a modified side plank. You can kick your right foot in behind you, lower your left heel to the mat and reach your left arm up towards the ceiling. So we have this opportunity to fire up the core. Okay? And to take this a little bit further, can you lift your left leg up off the mat? Now, after a day on the hill, I'm definitely feeling my quad. So if you are curious in exploring this stretch, you can bend your left knee, reach back with your left hand, see if you can find the big toe edge of your left foot, kick into your left hand as you send your hips forward, peel your chest open. Okay, so we get that nice opening through the front line, especially into the um, hip flexor muscles, including the quad here on the left side. Continue to anchor down through your right hand. If lifting the gaze will is causing strain in the neck, you can keep your gaze forward or down. We're not here for too much longer. Stay with me. One more inhale breath. 
As you exhale, if you have a bind, slow release. Left foot meets the mat, left hand to the mat, meet back in your tabletop. Okay. You can take three more cow cat to just reset the body before we move over to the other side. Let your breath guide you. We're not in a rush here, just really slow, steady movement. To set up on the other side, left hand will slide slightly forward, right leg extends long behind you. Roll open to the right side of your space this time. So right arm will reach up, you can anchor down through your right heel. And of course, you're welcome to stay right here. And if you're exploring that front body opening, lift your right heel up, bend your right knee, reach back for the big toe edge if you can. Okay. Roll your shoulder more back and as you send your hips towards that right side of your space, can you feel sensation move across the front line of the body into the front line of your right leg? Again, soften your gaze where you're able to um, hold ease in the upper body. So if that means gaze is down or up towards the ceiling, you choose. Stay for one more big inhale breath. As you exhale, slowly release the bind. Right foot down to the mat, right hand to the mat. Let's meet back in tabletop. All right, to move on from here, bring your knees together, big toes together. We'll move into a toe squat. So you'll tuck your toes under as you walk yourself back to sit hips on heels. Okay, so we know we um, ask a lot from the feet, the ankles when we're out on the hill. So this stretch might feel really intense at the end of the day. It can be intense even if we haven't done anything. So if at any point it starts to feel really overwhelming, you're welcome to lift up onto your knees, but see if you can keep the toes tucked under. Okay, we'll distract a little bit with the upper body. Inhale, reach your arms up overhead. Eagle arms, take your right arm underneath your left, drop once, maybe twice. You can bring the palms together, back of hands together, okay, or if that's a lot, reach for opposite shoulder blades or towards them. Okay. And then as we hold here, we know there's a lot going on in the feet. Hey, this is a pretty deep sensation for the feet, the ankles, so breathe through it. Know that this is just temporary and that the release will feel so good. Can you lift your elbows up more in line with your shoulders? Big stretch into your back body. Keep your core on, shoulders stacked over hips, tall upper body. Stay for one more big inhale breath. On your exhale, slowly unwind, bring your hands down to the mat. Lift your toes up off the mat for a moment. Roll out into the ankle a few times. Okay. And then we'll get right back into it for a second set. Walk your hands back. Okay. You might need to reach around and untuck the pinky toes. Okay. All right, we'll distract again with the upper body. Arms reach up overhead, left arm under right this time, wrap once, maybe twice, palms, back of hands, or reach towards the shoulder blades. Remember at any point, you can take a, the pressure away from the feet by lifting up. Okay, but again, this is just temporary. I promise when we're through here, we'll feel so good. Lift your elbows, pinky fingers more forward. Breathe into the space uh, between your shoulder blades. Inhale, release, arms up overhead, slower than you want to move. Bring your hands down to the mat. Peel your toes up away from the mat. Roll your ankles a few times. We'll counter that now with an ankle stretch. Tops of your feet flat to the mat. Sit back, hips on heels. Okay, taking ski boots off is the best feeling in the entire world. So hopefully this stretch feels good um, to kind of release some of the stress we feel on the ankles. So you're holding here. If this is enough, stay right here. 
Okay. If you feel any strain in the knees, you're welcome to, again, keep um, the hips slightly lifted to keep the pressure off. If you feel good here and you know you have a bit more range to move into, you're welcome to take your hands behind you. Slowly peel your knees up away from the mat. So this will intensify the stretch in the front of the ankles. Roll your shoulders from your ears, keep your chest open. Okay, one more addition, if you feel stable here and you think you can take a bit more onto the ankles, reach one hand at a time to a knee and you can hold from here. Again, shoulders back, chest is open, gaze is lifted. Take a few rounds of breath in whatever variation of this pose you're in. And we will come out just as slowly as we explored in. Lower your knees down to the mat if you're there. Walk yourself up. Okay. And we'll press into a downward facing dog to release all that work in the feet and the ankles. Spread your fingertips wide, tuck your toes under, lift your hips up and back. Okay, first down dog of this practice. This is a um, good full back body stretch here. So we lengthen along the spine and all the way down the back of the legs. Hey, this one can feel really good after that long car ride, getting home from mountains. So enjoy some movement here. Don't worry about holding this pose in stillness. I encourage you to actually create lots of movement. Pedal your knees, sway your hips, shake out your head. We're not here for too much longer, so let this feel really good. You can always modify this shape by stepping your feet in closer, keeping a deep bend in your knees. Ultimately, no right or wrong. Just make sure you feel stable. Bend your knees, look forward, walk to the top of your mat. There's a forward fold for you there. Okay, <laughs> hamstrings probably feeling those after a day on the hill. Take an inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. We'll stay here for a few rounds of breath, but I'll give you the invitation to keep that movement. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. For some of you, it will feel better to be more, um, to be moving more versus a static hold in your forward fold. That would be your other option if you'd like to grab opposite elbows, interlace your hands behind you, um, take what feels good for you in this moment. You wanna be able to connect to your breath, soften into the muscles in the back of the legs. Decompress along the spine, let go of any stress or strain in the shoulders, the neck. A couple more rounds of breath. Okay, slowly release whatever arm variation you have. Allow your upper body to fold. Take an inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise all the way up. There's a full body stretch. Squeeze your glutes at the top. Enjoy a couple um, side bends. Then bring your hands to heart. Okay. Heel toe your feet in. Now this next pose, chair pose. Um, take an inhale breath. Reach your arms overhead. Exhale, sit back. This one will most likely not feel great if you are post-ski, but a great um, pose to to land in if you're doing this pre-ski to build up some strength in the lower body, so your quads, your glutes. And we'll add a little bit of play here if you're joining me in this shape. Hips back, weight back in the heels. Okay, you bring your hands here to heart center. Take a big inhale breath. As you exhale, twist your torso to the right side of your space. Okay. Inhale breath, come back through center, keep your hips low. Exhale, twist over to the left. We'll do that a few times together. Inhale through center. Exhale, twist over your right side while you keep your hips nice and stable. Inhale through center. Exhale, twist to the left. One more time each side. Inhale through center. Exhale, twist right. Inhale through center. Exhale, twist left. Inhale, come up through center. Hold, hold, hold and forward fold, ha, uh, let that go. Take your feet out hip distance. We'll work through some sun salutations, just a few here, inhale, halfway lift. 
Exhale, plant your hands, step back into a plank pose. Okay, we're always looking for that strong core while we are on the hill. So fire up your core here, draw your navel in, squeeze into your strong quads and glutes. Inhale, breath, shift forward, lower your knees down to the mat for this first round. Bend your elbows to 90 degrees, slowly lower your chest to hover just in between your arms. Untuck your toes, peel through to an upward facing dog. Big stretch for the front line of your body. Knees, quads, hover. Exhale, downward facing dog. Okay, so we won't do the full variation. This is some um, almost a half salutation. So right away, we'll come back into high plank. Lower your knees or option to keep your knees at a hover. Lower down elbows, graze your rib cage. Inhale, sweep through upward facing dog. You're welcome to linger here for a few rounds of breath if it's feeling really good. Exhale, downward facing dog. One more time, inhale, shift forward, high plank, with or without your knees, low plank. Upward dog, inhale. Downward facing dog, exhale. Child's pose. Lower your knees down to the mat. Send your hips towards your heels. Land your forehead on the mat. Uh, we're not here for long. Connect to your breath. Soften into your body. And inhale, rise back up onto all fours. We just have a couple more poses before we close off. Extend your, actually let's press into down dog for this transition. You're welcome to transition from tabletop, um, but we'll move into lizard pose. Start with your right leg, lift it up and back behind you. Look forward and land your right foot to the pinky side of your right hand. Your left leg is long behind you. Lower your left knee down to the mat and untuck your toes. Good. So again, we know that the lower body, the hips, the glutes are doing so much work for us on the hill. So this might feel quite intense for you today. Lots of options to explore in this shape. You're welcome to stay right here with your hands on the mat. You can use fists if the wrists are feeling any strain. Okay. You're welcome to lower down to your forearms, your elbows, if you have a bit more space to move into. Another opportunity to explore a deeper quad stretch, you can roll to the pinky toe edge of your right foot, plant your left hand flat and bring your right hand to your inner right thigh. So we stretch that inner line of the right leg and sink a bit deeper into the left quad. One more opportunity to explore further, bend your left knee. Your right hand may reach back and find once again, well, actually this time the pinky toe edge of your back foot. The goal is to keep the top shoulder open. Okay. And allow yourself to soften into whatever areas of the body are really speaking to you here. Definitely the quad, the inner thigh, Okay, soften your gaze, whether it's to the earth or over your shoulder. Okay. Linger in this pose for as long as you would like to. Bring your right hand onto the mat to transition out. Tuck your left toes. Take a big step to the back of your mat, downward facing dog. Pedal out your knees a few times. We'll explore that on the other side. Left leg will kick up and back. Left foot will step to the pinky side edge of your left hand as you lower your right knee, top of your foot down to the mat. So take your time, acknowledge what it is that you need on this side. Hey, those of you who snowboard, um, most likely you'll have a pretty big difference between your right and left. Okay, as we're not symmetrical on the board, unless you're super tricky and you're riding between switch all day, that's cool. <laughs> right hand down to the mat. If you're taking the twist, roll to the pinky toe edge of your right foot, left hand to your inner left thigh. Okay. And bend your right knee, reach back if you're coming into that uh, deeper quad stretch. Okay. 
So our bodies typically are not completely balanced and symmetrical right and left. And then we add a activity, an activity like snowboarding where we can kind of create even more imbalance. A really big benefit for you guys who snowboard to create some symmetry after your ride um, by balancing out these poses. Take a few more rounds of breath. And slowly lower your back foot when you're ready to come out. Move as slowly as you can, really controlled. Left foot flat to the mat, tuck your right toes. Shoot your left leg back to a downward dog. Ha. Last opportunity to let that go, pedal it out. Then we'll work our way to meet in a, another supine position so you can walk forward, hop forward, come all the way through and land on your back. So just two more poses. We'll take a bridge flow. I love this movement um, for creating that balance between front and back side of the body, hey, especially when we're, you know, bent knees riding over our board or our skis. It's an opportunity to open up this front line. Arms alongside the body, feet flat to the mat, feet hip distance. Inhale, press into your feet, lift your hips. See if you can tuck your shoulders underneath your back, squeeze your glutes, and as you exhale, slow lower. Keep your shoulders tucked under if you can. Again, inhale, press into your feet, lift your hips. You might even tuck the shoulders even tighter and slow lower, let that go. One more time, this time we'll pause at the top, squeeze your glutes, lift your hips, feel that opening through the front line of the body. Okay? And if it's available, you may Roll your shoulders in even closer, interlace your grip, okay. and allow yourself to settle into that opening in the front line. Back line is working, right? So glutes are on, keep lifting. Stay for one more inhale breath. And exhale, release the grip, lower back down to your mat. Ha, let that go. Once you feel your spine neutralized, draw your right knee in towards your chest. Give yourself a big hug in. We'll move into a twist. Press into your left foot. Lift your hips. Swing them to the right. Extend your left leg long and guide your right knee to the left side of your space. You can use your left hand for support. And open your right arm up to a cactus or a T. These last few poses, I encourage you to hold and linger in for as long as you uh, have time for today. I'll work through them a bit quicker just so we can get through the rest of the sequence, but I encourage you to pause or tune me out once you're comfortable with these two shapes so that you can really soak it all in. From the twist, you will guide your right knee back through center. Land your right foot on the mat. Swing your hips back through neutral and open up to a reclined tree. So your right foot opens to the inner left line of your leg. Right knee falls open. You feel that um, anchor sensation with the hips. You can keep your arms open to a cactus or a T to keep that space across your chest. Okay, but use this pose, this shape to relax the lower body. You notice if you're clenching into the glutes, can you soften here? If this pose feels really good, stay here for as long as you like. To transition out, right hand to outer right thigh, bring your knee back through center. Okay. We'll switch over to the other side. Guide your left knee in towards your chest. Press into that right foot as you swing your hips to the left, right leg long. Right hand will guide your left knee towards the right side of your space. Left arm can open to a cactus or a T. Gaze may fall over that top shoulder. Give yourself permission to really tune into the sensations, what's coming up for you here. 
maybe acknowledge the difference between your right and left side, especially if um, you're not feeling quite symmetrical yet. Stay in this shape for as long as you need to, to transition out, gaze and knee move back through center. Okay. And your reclined tree pose, left foot to the inner right thigh, knee or ankle. Soften into your hips, the muscles around your hips, your glutes. You can rest your hands on the front of your hips to anchor in or invite that space across your chest, upper body. Linger here for as long as you like, especially if this feels really good and restorative. Eventually meet with your legs long down the length of your mat. Soften your arms alongside your body. This is your final pose, your rest pose, Shavasana, sink in. So whether this pose is part of your uh, more traditional yoga practice um, or it's more of a just a place to switch off and rest. I think it's a super beneficial pose in the sense that we give the physical body a chance to really absorb the benefits of the practice of the work. It's here where we give the body a chance to heal, regenerate, renew, whether we are uh, post ski day or just soaking in the benefits of this pre ski day stretch. In these final moments, we allow the body to just sink in. We're not asking, we're not working, we're not achieving. We're just here in this place of rest. So soak it all in. I'll leave you guys here in rest. Stay for as long as you can. Thank you so much for choosing to practice with me today, allowing me to guide you through movement and breath. Such a pleasure. From my heart to yours, namaste. Thanks again, you guys. I hope the sequence felt good in your body. I would love any feedback. I'd love to know how this felt, if it was supportive for your day on the hill or post day on the hill. Um, yeah, thanks again and hope to see you soon.